How's it going guys? Today I'm going to be answering a commonly asked question I see and that is what does het mean? So I commonly see this question online with people who are new to the hobby and just finally starting to see all the different morphs that are available. They see breeders put up things like 100% het, 66% het and all that sort of stuff and this is where the questions normally come from. So the most simple answer to the question is that het is simply short for heterozygous. For those of you that don't have a scientific background, you might be asking, well, what does heterozygous mean? The reptile morph world revolves around something called Mendelian genetics. I highly recommend you do some of your own research on Mendelian genetics, whether it's on YouTube or whatever, because it's really interesting stuff. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to keep it really simple. In order for any sort of trait to be visually expressed by an animal, you need to have two genes. So for example, if you're looking at an albino animal, it's going to have two copies of the albino gene. And this visually expressing animal that has both genes is called homozygous. Now if this albino animal then breeds with a normal wild type animal, it's going to leave the babies having one gene from the normal animal and then one gene from the albino animal. Now this is called heterozygous. You're only carrying one of the genes and the other one's a different gene. So now you guys should be able to understand that het is short for heterozygous and it means that the animal is carrying the gene for whatever trait. So if it's albinism again, a het for albino means it's carrying one albino gene out of the two required to express a visual albino. So the trait of albinism is actually what we call recessive, which means that when it's in the heterozygous form, het form, it won't be expressed. So if it's only carrying one gene of albinism, it's not going to be an albino. It needs to have both the genes to be able to express albinism. So in Mendelian genetics, you have recessive, dominant, and co-dominant traits. Now this is going a bit deeper into the Mendelian genetics. Albinism is recessive. Wild type animals are dominant and the dominant traits rule over the recessives in the heterozygous form, which is why only one gene of albinism won't be expressed when it's with a wild type animal. So you might be wondering why having hets can be important. And that is because obviously they carry the genes. So in the case of this guy here, this is a hypermelanistic blue tongue skink, completely black. So he has two copies of the hypermelanistic gene. So if I was to get a het that only had one of the genes, if I paired them together, a het and a visual animal, then 50% of the babies would come out looking like this guy. And the other 50 would carry the gene just like the other one. So yeah, hets are very important in creating new morphs and so on. So for a more in-depth view on all of this, I'd recommend heading over to my friend Joe's channel once again, Blue Tongue TV. I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, he did a whole genetics masterclass bunch of videos which covers everything I haven't gone into. Just keep stepping up in how complicated it is with real life animals to show off the differences and all that. So check that out if you like. So I hope all you guys now know what het means. Thanks heaps for watching. I'll see you next time.